Coming up on City Spotlight, the focus is on education in Mattoon. We will talk with Lakeland College President Dr. Josh Bullock about the Illinois State Budget's impact on Lakeland. Plus, we will discuss Lakeland's role with Illinois' correctional education. We will also talk Mattoon schools with Mattoon High School Principal Rich Stewart and Mattoon Middle School Principal Jeremy Smith. That's all next on City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com. Thank you to all of you for joining us for this latest edition of City Spotlight. Today we're talking education in Mattoon, and we're going to start the program off with Dr. Josh Bullock of Lakeland College, the president of Lakeland College. Josh, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Ramin. Glad, glad to be here. Great Pleasure to, be here. to have you on here at Thank the start you. of 2017 and the uh, spring winter semester is underway at Lakeland and we're going to talk about uh, the fall semester and, and the current semester. But yes. let's start off with the, uh, how the Illinois state budget has been impacting Lakeland. It's, uh, it's a recurring question that uh, I've asked many community leaders such as yourself and uh, how has Lake, Lakeland been able to navigate through this Illinois state budget uh, impasse? I think for any publicly funded institution, the budget crisis has had a profound impact on, the, on those institutions. Lakeland College received a significant portion of its funding from the state of Illinois. And uh, we were blessed to have staff and faculty that really pulled together this year. We balanced our budget on anticipation of 50% funding from the state. So essentially, we worked to cut about $5.7 million out of our budget this year, and our staff did it without complaint. You know, one of the beauties of, of being in the state of Illinois is the work ethic and we had people that really pulled together for the benefit of our students. Uh, unfortunately, we did have to make some staff reductions. We have a number of positions that are, are vacant that we are unable to fill. Uh, we also have cut our operational budget by 25%. So we've really done all we can to adapt to the budget, but I think as you hear from other institutions, it's not something that we can or other institutions can sustain into the long term. We really do need soon, hopefully, a budget from our, our state legislators, and I'm optimistic that it will happen this spring. We heard those uh, similar words from Dr. David Glassman from Eastern Illinois on a recent episode of City Spotlight. Uh, talking with you beforehand, this has taken a lot of your time and a lot of uh, university and community college presidents, just everybody's time. It's just, it's an overwhelming situation for a lot of people, it's unprecedented that we've had a state budget uh, impasse this long. Um, talk about the amount of time that you are consumed to dealing with things in and around this. Well, when you're down to, um cutting as much as we've had to cut and as much as many institutions have to cut, you literally scrutinize every single purchase, every expense. And the hardest part is the unknown for many of us. Uh, if we were to say, have the state tell us, gosh, you'll have a 10% cut this year or a 20% cut, we would find a way to adapt. But with all the unknowns, you're constantly analyzing because you don't know, and, and we didn't know until we had the stopgap budget in June, whether we would get 100% funding or no funding. And so you are, you are working perpetually to understand where your expenses fall, to analyze every process, to see where you can find efficiencies. So it truly does for many become all consuming and it detracts from the ability to look futuristically and, and look to the benefit of the institution, what it can be in the long term. You know, we've, we have been able to balance that as we've made uh, a lot of the cuts that we've had to make and a lot of the, the staffing reductions, we've done so very strategically really considering what should the institution look like 10 years from now and how will this facilitate us getting to that point. So that also, it takes a lot of time to, to use that level of planning futuristically. Uh, how, is this, how has this impacted or not impacted uh, tuition? Uh, we did see a tuition increase this year. Uh, we increased our tuition $10 per credit hour at the start of the fall. But even with that tuition increase, as we saw our peers increase their tuitions, we are still one of the lowest cost educational providers in the state. It's about $3,800 a year right now to attend Lakeland College, all in, books, fees, tuition. So we have, we have really emphasized in working with our trustees that we retain that ability for every single resident of our community to achieve an education at a minimal cost because uh, money's tight for everyone and we need to make sure that education is accessible for every student, and it's one of our goals. And I think you mentioned just a minute or so ago about your staff and the flexibility and, and, and the no complaining, and, and to be able to work with staff at this, you know, constant changing uh, uh, of, of, with this budget situation, talk about your staff and, and how they've been able to 
uh, work with it. You know, our staff again realized that that th this wasn't something that Lakeland College caused, and so our goal is to adapt to that. And the, the interesting part is, I walk around campus, and this first week of class back on campus, I've been walking the buildings, and there is such a positive attitude on on campus, despite the budget woes. Our faculty are engaged, they're there for students, they're smiling, they're happy, they're getting the students rallied in the classrooms. Our staff are there to help the students. From a staffing perspective, we have not seen that, oh gosh, why always us? You know, it's that mentality of as a family, when you're struck with adversity, you, you work together, you band together, and you find a way to, to overcome that adversity. And our staff has really done that, our faculty have done that, and it's, it's been amazing. As a matter of fact, this past year, our faculty signed a memorandum of understanding with uh, the college district to say we won't take any pay increases, benefit increases, we won't, we'll put off hiring any new faculty to help us get through this crisis. So they were there at the table saying, let us help. How can we help the college? And it's, it's just been amazing. Let's talk a little bit about some supplemental funding that uh, we're taping this here in the, about the second week of January 2017, some supplemental funding was uh, passed that will help Lakeland. We were blessed that it, uh, in early January, the Illinois Bar Board of Higher Education did pass supplemental funding that came out of the original stopgap budget. And that funding was for those colleges who had a high dependency on state aid and property taxes, those whose property tax percentage was less than 25% of their operational budget, and those who've already made significant cuts. So although we had a balanced budget, we met all the criteria because we have been doing our best to make sure that uh, the, the financial impact has been minimal, and so we were blessed to, to receive some of that supplemental funding. It's $428,000, which is not a lot of money in, in the grand scheme of things, but enough that it will help lessen the burden of some of the cuts we've had to make. We have had to bring back some positions that we weren't anticipating just because the workload was too heavy, and so that will allow us to continue to do some of that. All right, we're in the 2016-17 school year, and so talk about your uh, fall and spring enrollments. Uh, what, are the, what are the numbers like at Lakeland uh, this school year? Fall enrollments were, were strong for us. We were flat, which across the state of Illinois, uh, the community colleges saw an average 8% decrease in their enrollments, and we were flat. In this, this spring, we're looking a little bit better, so we're looking uh, to be flat, if not up slightly uh, at that point in time. Uh, but we know we've done a lot to help encourage that. Uh, we've had a number of initiatives that have helped us to get to that point. Uh, we started the Lakeland Promise uh, last year, which said that any course that has six students enrolled or more, we guarantee that course will run. And that's because we know so many students balance their life around school. And it's not fair to them to, at the last minute, the last week before class to start, change their schedule. So we, we've done a lot to make that commitment to students, and we think that it really is helping students because the enrollments have been strong, much stronger than what our peers have experienced. Well, what, is, uh, what, what are some of the details on that Lakeland Promise? Is there's a certain number of students that are, minimum number of students in the class, that, and if there are, the students can continue to take that course? Yes, if we have six students enrolled in the class one week before the class, we will guarantee that that class will run. And the other nice part is our faculty have stepped up to say, many of them, if it has fewer than six students, we'll run it as a lim limited student section. We'll, re we'll run that class for a significantly reduced pay to make sure that those students have the opportunity to take the class. And again, it speaks to the values of the Lakeland College family, that they're willing to do that to make sure every student has that ability to get an education and that because of the state budget problems and other things, we will not disrupt that ability to have an education for those students. Great new way for students at Lakeland to, be, to benefit from. Let's uh, talk about some uh, career academies. There's currently a career academy involving Mattoon. And uh, on a recent episode of City Spotlight, we talked with Mark Doan from uh, the Effingham School District about them uh, starting up the Effingham Regional Career Academy. I understand that Lakeland is uh, a part of both of those. We are a strong partner in both. Uh, Lakeland College's Career Academy here in Mattoon, we started about a year and a half ago with the idea that there are so many students that get disengaged early on in their educational experience that are bright, energetic, enthusiastic students that if you, if you can capture that energy in a field that allows them to work with their hands, um, you can keep those students. And so we started that with automotive, building construction trades, and manufacturing trades. This year we also added some IT programming and that's been wonderfully successful. You move that down to Effingham and we've been working on this for about three years. It's a partnership between the school districts, uh, Lakeland College, and business and industry. And what's wonderful is it's a, it's a way to look at consolidation strategically versus necessarily having somebody force consolidation upon you. At a time when school districts are finding it hard to hire an automotive instructor or an ag instructor, this model says, okay, what if we looked at all the schools where their, their capabilities were and what they had for available resources and share that between the school districts and Lakeland and the businesses to have really a seamless opportunity for not only high school students, but incumbent workers who might need training, 
or that person who's underemployed who says, gosh, I really want to be in this field, but I don't have the ability to get training for it. We have the ability now with the Career Academy to build a structure that supports all three of those and ultimately benefits the communities because it provides well-trained employees for those organizations who want their businesses to stay in the local communities. A great opportunity for a lot of people to benefit from those Career Academies. Absolutely. Let's talk about the uh, Presidential Scholarship at Lakeland. We started the Presidential Scholarship a year ago and that scholarship is for any student in our community's high schools that graduates in the top 15% of their class or achieves a 26 or higher on their ACT can attend Lakeland College tuition free. And that's again to ensure that every student has access to education. We know there's a tremendous amount of rural poverty in our, in our district and there are students who even $3,800 a year is, is insurmountable for them. So we built this program to allow those students who really want that education and who've worked hard to get it. We uh, had 140 students apply uh, the first year and come to Lakeland College and this year we had 160. So we have 300 presidential scholars roughly on campus that are there and we're, we're also uh, building experiences around that, student experiences that allow those scholars to have some additional honors type classes and honors experiences above and beyond just being a presidential scholar to create that well-rounded student with the goal of either getting them into the workforce when they graduate or getting them to transfer to an institution like Eastern Illinois University. With a couple minutes just remaining here, Josh, let's see if we can uh, get through a couple more uh, subject areas. Uh, sustainability at Lakeland, I understand there's some changes going on there. We continue to be, to be a sustainable campus. In the last uh, several years, we've moved from wind technology to photovoltaic or uh, harnessing the power of the sun. We've added 340 kW of photovoltaic onto the roofs of our buildings where nobody can see it, <laughs> but it's there generating energy. And this summer, it exceeded all of our expectations. The amount of energy we were generating on top of the buildings was not only powering the buildings, but distributing energy beyond that. Now that does mean that we're starting to divest ourselves from wind technology. Uh, we've learned that the wind technology we have used at the college is just not the appropriate wind technology for the area. And so we will be uh, divesting ourselves of our turbines come this spring. We'll be taking down one of our turbines entirely and the other turbine will leave up for training, but we'll be removing the blades, locking the nacelle in place, and really using that for, for training, not only for the students who are training in sustainability programs, but we also have local uh, law enforcement who train in confined spaces in that, in that tower. So um, we're still happy to be a sustainable campus, but the sustainability footprint on campus will look a little bit different. Okay, look forward to seeing how that, that pans out. Last topic here, Josh, let's talk about uh, Lakeland and correct, correctional education in the state of Illinois. I understand that benefits the state quite a bit. It does. Most folks don't realize that Lakeland College is the largest provider of corrections training in the state of Illinois and probably one of the largest in the nation. Uh, currently we serve 19 institutions, two juvenile centers and 17 adult centers. Uh, we serve almost 7,000 students a year, unique students. And what that means for the state of Illinois is by educating students in fields that we know they can get jobs in when they come out of the facility, it reduces recidivism by over 50 percent. Now when you consider it costs 22,000 a year to house an inmate, if we can reduce recidivism, that is a tremendous savings. On average, it costs $1,400 a year to educate them. So the return on that investment for the state um, is, is immeasurable. Students also, when they participate, get uh, what used to be called good time credit, that for every credit they take in school through Lakeland College and the facility, they reduce their sentence. And so I believe last year alone, we reduced about 140 years of good time credit in sentencing. So you multiply 140 times 22,000 a year, that's a pretty significant savings for the state of Illinois. It really is an investment for our taxpayers to educate these inmates so that they don't come back and continue to be a, a drain on our system. And those sites uh, are all across the state of Illinois. So. They are all across the state of Illinois. Very impressive. A lot of good things going on at Lakeland College over in Mattoon, the president of Lakeland College, Dr. Josh Bullock. It's been a pleasure and uh, look forward to talking to you again when we have a state budget passed. I would like that. Thanks, Ramin. And coming up here next on City Spotlight, we'll continue talking education in Mattoon. We'll talk Mattoon schools with Mattoon High School Principal Rich Stewart and Mattoon Middle School Principal Jeremy Smith. But first, let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Mattoon. And we're back here on City Spotlight as we continue this episode on Mattoon. We're going to shift gears now and talk Mattoon schools. And I have two principals from a couple of Mattoon schools. Rich Stewart from Mattoon High School. Welcome, Rich. Hey, thanks for having me back. 
pleasure. Jeremy Smith from Matthew Middle School. Welcome, Jeremy. Hello, thanks for having me. Rich is a return guest, and we'll, we'll get to that in just a, just a second at a different school venue. But Jeremy, you're our first time guest on the program. Can you tell us how long you've been at Mattoon Middle School? Sure. Hi, I came to Mattoon Middle School in 2000 as a teacher and coach and have climbed through the ranks. 2005 started as an assistant principal in 2008, took over the principalship where I've been serving as the principal uh, since that time. All right, very good. Glad to have you on and look forward to hearing about Mattoon Middle School. Yeah, for sure. And, and Rich, we've had you on the program uh, last school year. You were the principal at Shelbyville High School and uh, now you've come over to Mattoon, but it's, it's not a place you're unfamiliar with. You were uh, under Michelle Sinclair, who we had on the program last year. So talk about coming back to a familiar place. Yeah, um, I left. Uh, I spent four years at Shelbyville High School and I was lucky enough when my friend Michelle Sinclair retired last year that I was asked to to come back and given this opportunity. Uh, having spent nine years as a teacher and an assistant principal there previously. So coming back to familiar but also a lot of new faces and an entirely new student population because the graduating class prior was my freshman, last freshman class. So got a whole new set of kids uh, but it's been a great, a great welcome back and a familiar place, so did that make, make it an easy, easy decision for you to, to uh, apply and, and obviously you took the job, so did that make it easier that you had been here before? Yeah, I, it's uh, knowing many of the community members and the community as well as uh, a great deal of the staff has made a transition to a much larger job than the Shelbyville position, uh, eas more easy and I'm very happy I did that. And so moving from one place to another, it's still same job title, but different location. What, uh, what uh, transition challenges have you had along the way? Um, catching back up on new policies. Uh, one of the great things that Michelle did along with the staff and along with partners here at EIU was starting a, a bionic, believe it or not, I care mentoring program that I believe she's talked about on this program. Mm -hmm and seeing that impact and the opportunity for kids to be leaders in our school uh, has been awesome. Uh, time commitment and the extra guidance that goes along with that program is considerable, but it's definitely something uh, worthwhile and that I look at uh, improving along with the help of Dr. Larson of EIU. It's a fantastic program. As you, as you mentioned, we did talk with uh, Michelle Sinclair there at Mattoon High School last year about the mentoring program. Anything new to it? Any additions, changes, or any feedback you can tell us on how it's going? One of the neat things, I think, coming in from the outside, so to speak, is being able to see attendance, grades, credit earned, all improving from when it was started four years ago to today. And some of the changes we've made is better supporting kids in terms of they need help with schoolwork. So better pairing kids in regards to homework help and skill development. And I think that's a, a shift for this year that wasn't there last year and something that we'll continue to manipulate but is, is bringing us some new gains. And you're, and both of you gentlemen are in the start of your se second semester of the school year. And uh, as I, before I get to Jeremy on some questions about the middle school, uh, anything, anything notable that you'd like to highlight that happened in the fall semester at Mattoon High School? Oh, uh, it was a great semester. Kids accomplishing a lot of things, uh, had successful sports seasons with plenty of highs there, uh, as well as uh, kids achieving, uh, different academic awards and whatnot. So it's been a good, it was a really good fall semester. I'm, I consider myself very lucky. All right, excellent, thank you so much. Jeremy, let's uh, bring you into the conversation. A couple things that you told me you wanted to talk about. Uh, uh, you had some things you wanted to bring up about Mattoon Middle, uh, Middle School and that you, as you said, hang your hat on. And mm -hmm. one of those was uh, teaming. Sure, uh, the, the teaming concept, uh, it, it's really at our core. Um, it, it is the thing that we feel like makes the difference um, in a pretty difficult time of, of development for kids. Uh, it really becomes the school within the school uh, philosophy. Uh, we, we can partner kids with teams and, and start to wrap them almost immediately upon entrance into the school. Um, they develop their own personalities 
and and those personalities change every year really it, it kind of ebbs and flows as the kids uh, come and go through each of the grades and the teams are very responsive to that um, the teams are comprised of, of subject area teachers and uh, they go through the advisory programs with the teachers and there there's just a very um, a very close inspection of what's going on with the kids and the teachers are very in tune uh, with what each of the kids uh, have going on in their lives and, and are able to get to those things very quickly versus trying to just spread that out across uh, an entire grade level of sometimes 270 kids. So. Okay, uh, next up, uh, you want to talk about opportunities for kids. Yeah, I think, I think one of the things that we are, are super proud of is the fact that as we have seen uh, a lot of struggle in schools in central Illinois, uh, that we have worked diligently to try to increase the number of opportunities. Uh, for kids that, that um, you know, we're, we're trying to find an identifier for them. When they come to school, they have that thing that is going to be a place where they feel most comfortable with peer groups that are, are like uh, and have similar interests. So um, the opportunities are there uh, in terms of the arts and music exploration, in terms of extracurriculars, in terms of athletics. But I think even beyond the scope of that, it's the things that are happening before school and during lunch in terms of video gaming and, and um, you know, chess clubs and, and just a lot of different things that are piquing kids' interest. What we ask if you if the student has an interest in being involved in something, seek out a teacher and, and we'll see what we can do. We just uh, we just implemented the Fellowship of Christian Athletes into our building this year with the some of the direction of Coach Johnson over at the high school and that's a student population right now that's reaching near 80 kids. So um, it's just about trying to find different things to get kids connected to the school because when they're connected, they want to come. Excellent, great, great to hear about that new program. And uh, third, you want to talk about supportive staff system. Yeah, I think um, sort of tying into what Rich is talking about with the Bionic program, uh, we recognize the, the transitions are very difficult for kids, uh, not only in coming to the middle school, but also transitioning to the high school. And I think that there's really a, a hyper awareness now of, of how critical those transitions are. And, and we are uh, pretty reliant on the support systems that come into place that when a kid is struggling to transition, either between grade levels or between buildings. Uh, we've got the necessary supports in place to be able to pinpoint what's wrong and then start to implement resources to try to address those things far sooner than maybe what we have been in, in years past. Right. Great, to, great to hear about that correlation between the two schools and it is, it is tough changing as, as those of us that remember going from one school to another. So great to hear about that. And lastly, uh, Jeremy, uh, the Horizon Schools to Watch is something that Mattoon Middle School has has uh, been a part and applied for. So can you yes, explain uh, what that is, please? Uh, yeah, we, we just completed the, the third year or the, the application process this past spring. Uh, we were redesignated for the third time this past spring. Um, and, and it's something that we're very proud of. It, it is truly a reflection of the hard work of the teachers, but it also is a reflection of the support that we get from our Board of Education, uh, from the district level administration, and certainly from the parents and, and, and the teachers and the hard work that they're doing. Um, it, you know, it's, it's a, what we feel like to be a pretty prestigious honor. Um, we had an opportunity to go out to Washington, D.C. with other schools to watch this summer and be recognized out on Capitol Hill um, and, and work towards uh, continued legislation for middle, school, uh, middle schools across the country. And it's something that we're very proud of, but it also means that uh, the day following that recognition that we begin the school improvement process all over again and, and have a certain number of goals and things that we wanna try to achieve over the next three years then. So Sounds it like is ongoing. Sounds like you have a consistency and something really working there and congratulations on the honor as well. Thank you. Uh, as we have a couple minutes here left with you gentlemen, and uh, is there any collaborative work that you guys can talk about between the two schools? Because obviously, as you just mentioned, middle school to high school, that's where the, the, the progression of children going. Can you talk about any collaborative work that you guys do together? I think kind of picking up where Jeremy left off in terms of support and that transition, that's one of the areas I think we've grown a lot in. And it, it seems simple that, hey, you just have a conversation, but it's hard to have a, converse, a short conversation about a, and sum up a student. So I think the level of collaboration between the teams at the middle school and at freshman level, we do teaming as well, uh, has really led to much smoother transitions and allowing kids to, who are struggling, 
to get help more quickly and for things that don't need to be repeated in terms of learning uh, what works best for particular students, there doesn't have to be that learning curve. So shrinking that allows us to better serve the students more quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's thanks to the teachers at the middle school and obviously Jeremy as well. Well, I, I think a, a couple of other things there. Um, we we work in conjunction with Mattoon High School. Our students uh, ride a bus over. They participate in the ag program uh, that's held at Mattoon High School. Our students go over there and, and they're under a choral directorship over at the high school as well. So it, it really is expanding the boundaries of our buildings to, to make sure the opportunities are there for kids so that you know our kids are receiving instruction that they want um, at the high school level and, and hopefully it's it's helping them segue into the high school when they get there that it's something that they're already familiar with I and mean, I think even beyond the scope of that and to reach even further down into the elementary buildings um, our collaboration has increased exponentially just in the last year and a half we, we are meeting as an administrative team on a regular basis so that we can become more consistent about professional development about uh, the evaluative component about uh, the systems that are in place so that these kids are transitioning um, transitioning more smoothly into uh, the next grade level so I think our administrative collaboration is is definitely uh, an upside for us and, and working out very well for us right out of the gates. Great to hear about this uh, working together. It's, you know, it's a team here. It's uh, all of Mattoon School District. So gentlemen, I appreciate your time here uh, coming on to talk about your respective schools and the work that you guys are doing together. Jeremy Smith, principal at Mattoon Middle School. Thank you for having me. Rich Stewart, principal at Mattoon High School. It's been a pleasure. Hey, thank you. And thank you to all of you for joining us for this episode on Mattoon Talking Mattoon Schools. We'll see you next time. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.